What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today I want to get in depth with one of my uh, favorite organic modeling extensions, Curvaloft. Um, before I get started, I do want to thank my supporters on Patreon. As always, you guys are what keep this channel going. Special shout out to Robert Mitchell. He just doubled his contribution for the month. I really appreciate that. And um, Patreon is just how I support um, going out and getting more extensions and just kind of growing the show and being able to pay for new ideas and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check that out in the link below. So let's go ahead and just jump into this thing. All right, so I wanted to make this video just to get a little more in depth with the extension Curvaloft. Uh, Curvaloft is a free extension from Fredo 6. And um, basically, it's an organic modeling extension that helps you create surfaces from lines. So it's very valuable in the way that it does that. And so I'll link to where you can download that in the notes below. But when you first install the extension, and you activate the menu, it's going to pop up right here. You're going to have a little menu for Curvaloft. And so you're going to have three options in here, um, three different things that you can do with Curvaloft. So there's loft by spline, loft along path, and then there's skinning. And I'm mostly going to talk about loft by spline and skinning in this tutorial. But um, so the first thing you can do, so the way that loft by spline works is it basically takes a shape and um, it basically, well, it basically takes the profile of one shape and extrudes it so it can end up as another shape. So if I come in here with the circle tool, so I activate the circle tool by tapping the C key, and I draw a 24-sided circle. So tap T or tap C, type in 24, and hit the enter key to draw a 24-sided circle. So if you draw a 24-sided circle here, and then you come up and you draw a square up above, So, and we'll go ahead and draw a line right here, but if I draw a square up above and then I erase this line, I would select those two objects and activate loft by spline. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna come in here and it's gonna generate geometry. That basically takes this bottom shape and makes it turn into this top shape. And you can see how it's kind of trying to interpolate um, exactly where those things go. And there's a few different options that you can adjust up here to kind of help that along. And so I, when, when you first open this up, this is all kind of intimidating looking stuff. It's really not that intimidating once you kind of figure out what everything does. But basically you've got these options over here for how it actually interpolates or interpolates the lines. So you can see as I click on this, it creates different looking geometry. Um, so basically it's doing the math for how it interpolates this differently. So some of these create more curves, some of them are more straight. So a lot of this piece is just kind of trial and error so you can kind of pick a shape that you want. And then there's a whole bunch of different options over here that you can kind of adjust in order to figure out exactly how you want this to look. So like for example, this allows you to adjust the number of space or the number of lines that it's including in here. So you can see as as I up this, it's adding 30 segments, 35 segments. You can create a lot of different geometry in here. I haven't actually used the simplify very much. So I honestly I'm not really 100% sure what that does. It hasn't been that important to me. But then you so you can adjust your number of horizontal lines that it's creating with the number of segments and then you can activate this interpolate to adjust the number of lines in between. So you can basically adjust the number of segments that this is adding in here. So you can see how as I as I add this, it's adding more segments along the side here. So you can kind of adjust the way that that works. And you can click on all of these and just enter values if you want. And then the VX matching is just another way, you can see how it's adjusting where these segments go along this line. So you can adjust those by clicking on this. And that's another kind of trial and error thing. So you can see how that's kind of orientating those in a different way. And then there's these options over here for geometry. And this is gonna show up both on the loft by path and the skinning as well, generally speaking. They're gonna have slightly different options, but they're still gonna show up. Well, one of the things you can do is you can adjust this um, to add faces or not. So you can actually set this to just create this kind of cage, this kind of framework if you want to by clicking on these options. So if you just wanted these paths, um, you could do that. I've used that before to create things like uh, 
I think I use that to create a suspension bridge. You can you can use that to create kind of faces that you can extrude uh, like tubes and that sort of thing along. So you can actually use this to create geometry for certain shapes if you want to do that as well. And then one of the other things that you can do is if you click on this, if you click on this object, it allows you to come in here and adjust the twist. So the way that things twist, so you can adjust that basically any way that you want to. And you can see how these are red and blue. And I believe what that means is that's adjusting where these objects go along the red and blue shapes. So like if I, for example, if I adjust this uh, 90 degrees, it's moving where these are going along this blue box. If I adjust this 15 degrees, I think it's adjusting the objects down below. So you can use this to actually set a twist of your object and you need to be careful you don't go quite too far because you can get some kind of weird uh, distortions and that sort of thing but once once you kind of understand how, how all of this works you can create some really cool shapes so I mean obviously this isn't really that exciting but and th this is an this is actually an example that Aiden Chopra used back in his blog post about this a while ago but it's a really great example so if you come in here and you create like kind of a flower shape like if I create a 12 sided circle and I draw some arcs along here and I use the rotate tool in copy mode to create copies of this all the way around here and I erase out all these extra lines that'll give me kind of a flower shape And I'm using the move tool in copy mode to create this copy up. So just select it, activate the move tool by tapping the M key and then uh, click and tap the control key to turn copy mode on. Well, what I can do is I can actually scale this inward and then I can create another copy up here and I can select all of those and I can use loft by spline and it'll come in here and it'll generate kind of an inverse flower shape. Well, then what you can do is you can generate a twist On this and you can see how for some reason it doesn't really like it when I do it in 15 degree intervals but the 30 but the 30 degree intervals work fine so every second one seems to work fine on this one but you can see how I can tell this to generate this curve in here and I don't necessarily like what it's doing down here on the bottom so pr probably the way that I would do this is I would select this object I would use loft by spline I'd create my curve and then I'd select it I'd make a copy of it and I'd move it down and then just flip it and put it back you would probably need to flip it this way as well but you can see how by doing that you can create cool kind of curving twisting shapes in here so and you could do the inverse as well meaning like let's say for example instead of making this smaller you could make it bigger and you could create a completely different kind of shape so once you kind of start understanding the way that this extension creates geometry in here, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. So it's something that you kind of have to play around with, but once you get it kind of figured out, you can create some really, really cool objects. The second object I'm not going to talk about much, but loft along path basically allows you to dictate the path that this happens along. So like for example, I could tell that to loft along path probably the way that I would do this is you could generate an arc between these two shapes and you could create loft along path and what it would do is it would loft that shape along the path that you dictated there so that wouldn't that wouldn't work for example if you just created these two objects if you clicked loft 
you can see how there's no arc here and so if these were just kind of on the same path then you can see how that wouldn't really generate useful geometry but since you can but since you can dictate the path in this case you can create this arcing shape along here and I'm not a hundred percent sure you may be able to come in here let's go ahead and give it a try you may actually be able to come in here and create another shape along this path so that this gets smaller and bigger let's give that a try yep so you can do that as well so you could create smaller and bigger pieces along this path so you could have these big pieces you could have your path along here and you could have a small piece and it'll kind of interpolate those in there as well and I think that you can give it a twist yeah it'll let you still adjust the twist and everything else in here as well so you can use that to kind of dictate the way that this travels and create some kind of interesting shapes that way and then the last one's kind of my favorite the last one's called the skinning tool and what the skinning tool does is the skinning tool actually allows you to create skins along frameworks so a really good example of this is if I come in here and I draw uh, we'll call it a hexagon so I'm activating the circle tool I'm tapping 8 and hitting the inner key to create an 8 sided circle if I draw a series of arcs and I'm using the rotate tool in copy mode if I draw a series of arcs in here and I select all of this what the skinning tool will allow me to do is that'll actually allow me to generate a skin along this space so you can see how what that does is that generates a skin along each one of these objects and you can do the same thing with um, in this case these aren't going to really change much because this is a pretty mathematically simple thing so it really interpolates these pretty simply but you can come in here and you can adjust things like the sampling to adjust the number of uh, lines that this draws in here and then you could also if you wanted to just generate the actual geometry in here the other thing you could do is you could select individual objects just by clicking on them so you're clicking on one of these faces and then you can come in here and do the same thing where you just click on your geometry in here and so you could generate paths in here you could generate faces along here so you can do a whole lot of different things um, just by kind of planning this planning ahead with this and one of my favorite things you can do with this is let's say for example that I had a line here and I use the extension helix along curve to create a helix along this along this line so you can see how this is just kind of a helical line that's just curving around this line right here well right now if you explode this group and then you click on it and you try to use the skinning tool it won't work because these lines don't touch each other so you could come in here and draw a line along these two points to kind of close this in well now it can take a look at it and actually generate a skin along that object so but you can see how it's kind of creating some uh, you're kind of running into some issues here because it's creating some kind of extra geometry along here well what you can do is if you look at this helix if you click on it you can see how many segments are in the helix and then you can right click on this line and divide it so that it has an equal number of segments or probably two less so because you're gonna have a line up here you're gonna have a line up here so I'm just gonna right click on this line I'm gonna divide it into 318 segments and I'll tell you why in a minute but now you can select this and you can use the skinning option and it's gonna actually create like a real skin that follows along here and the reason this works is because this is basically taking a line from every point of your segment and drawing it into the center well since we divided this into 318 segments now it knows to take every one of these points and just draw it straight in on your segment so now you've got an equal number of segments in your curve and in your line in the center and so it creates kind of the perfect amount of geometry in here and hopefully that made sense if it doesn't leave a comment below and I'll try to uh, explain it a little more in depth I know that's more of an advanced application 
but um, once once you kind of understand the way that this works the way that this comes in here and kind of matches up the number of segments to create your skin then you can really start getting creative on some of the stuff that you can create all right so hopefully that was helpful to you i wanted to get kind of in depth i feel like i kind of rushed through it a little bit but leave a comment below let me know what you thought did this did this kind of help you was it useful information for you i just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week if you like what i'm doing on this channel please consider supporting me on patreon uh, the link for that should be right down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.